Dr. He. Hi. You are a naturopathic doctor. Yes. Can you explain what that is and the difference between a naturopathic doctor and a regular medical doctor? Uh, Western medicine uh, MDs, they deal with, uh, of course, medical um, surgery and pharmaceuticals. Holistic naturopathics, what we deal is on a natural realm for us, using herbal remedies, uh, natural remedies such as healing arts, acupuncture, herbal, er, herbs, iridology, um, um, keep kinesiology, all anything that's dealing with healing the body naturally. That's what uh, we focus on. So, what is your background? Your schooling, certificates. Well, I went to school for holistic medicine, totally uh, natural value, but uh, especially is in herbology and iridology. That's what I focus on. Herbal uh, herbology is where I use different herbal remedies to correct and start working on healing the body. The iridology is the method we use to see, to do an analysis, see exactly what's going on with the person. Uh, if they have certain illness or problems going on, we can start seeing, assessing through looking at the organs. So your specialties are iridology and, and herbology? Yes. So how did you pick those as your specialty? Um, well, actually, it picked me more than I picked it. Uh, I was um, actually going and wanted to be a marshal, basically. I wanted to, so, um, so holistic medicine, it picked me. And then when I got into uh, to the field, herbalists I started making different when I learned about herbs it basically I started mixing different herbs together to start working on help correcting different problems that a person that was going through uh, different cancers and diabetes uh, high blood pressure things that can naturally be uh, to be exited out the body through the, the right uh, herbal combination and also diet is plays a key part too that was uh, one of my specialties was the herbology and the iridology. Awesome. So iridology is useful when determining someone's diagnosis, you say. So how do you uh, figure out someone's diagnosis using their eyes? Well, all the different uh, fragments of the eye, all the vessels from the eye is all connected to all different parts of the body. So every organ is connected to the eye, just like the hands, the feet, and the back are connected to all the organs. So we use the iris, uh, which is the blueprint of the body, which you probably heard the eyes is the window to the soul. And basically, we look at all the different the the, uh, the ligaments and the, uh, the vessels that's coming through the eye to see which organ that is being attacked, uh, the blood, and what's going on with the body. And so that. Is, gives us a complete good analysis of what's going on with the person where we can be able to assist them to have a more better holistic lifestyle. Very awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been able to observe your practice and see what it's about and you have me on your own line of cleanse that you have in front of you. Um, so you made this, and you researched it, and you did all your background. How did you determine that the length of it and the whole background and code of it was the right way to go. Okay. Um, I heard you say practice. Well, we don't even practice. We get it right the first time. So we don't even practice. We leave that to some other people like to practice. But I got into uh, the cleansing, of what the way I designed it was uh, to be more spiritual than physical and to uh, put the person on the fasting, which is back in the early times where people fasted and prayed because they get rid of the detoxing. And so I put some things together uh, during from holistic medicine back in the time uh, where people used to fast and do a lot of cleansings and put it together with the knowledge uh, then and now with the herbal combinations to help with, say, cleaning the blood, uh, getting rid of uh, toxicity of the lymphatic system, parasites, and because these are some things that people deal with on a daily basis. So that's how I put this formulation together in this packet of the cleanse, which is a 20-day cleanse. The seven days, the first seven days is the fasting, which is the roughest. But each one of the formulas is to hit every specific parts of the body where a person is going through. And that's on these day-to-day -day places, which is acids. Everybody dealing with acid problems. Eat too many carbonic acid, uric acid, etc. So the uric acid, blood, parasites, lymphatic system, pancreas. So. so all the herbs on it, you change for each individual client and their needs, or it's 
all the same for everybody. Well, if everyone starts off with the cleanse, because that's, that's step one. We do three phases. The first step is cleansing. The second stage is the healing. The third stage is the maintaining. The healing stage is where now after a person does the cleanse, we start working on the specifics because everybody have a specific, but everybody needs to cleanse with just the basics. So regardless of what's going on with the person, we all want to cleanse. So now we're going to go into the, the, the specifics. So for an example, if a person has a, have a different type of cancers or a blood pressure problem or diabetes, well now we're working on the specific herbs and working on diet, changing with through diet, working on it after the, um, the seven, after the 20 days of the cleanse. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Um, you've also been working with my son who has some hyperactivity problems and eye issues and being able to focus. Mm -hmm. You advised him to stay off of sugar for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, what had you? What made you come to that decision? And how do you think that was also going to improve his motor behavior, like when he was in karate so he could focus? Okay, sugar goes through the body so fast, like at 100 miles an hour, versus herbs and the food go through the body at like 20, 25 miles an hour. So the herbs and the food go through the body to heal the sugar goes through that to corrupt and break down the blood. So it's that and caffeine and that actually those, it creates what you call a breakage of the circuits in the, from the circulation of the brain uh, for the motor skills. So by him taking off the sugar, uh, it improves his alertness, uh, the motor skills of uh, the tension to stay focused more. Uh, and it's the motor skill, and it definitely affects it with the karate because now you can stay focused more because the sugar is not a main factor. There's a mess with the sensory locomotion part of the, of the brain and also the five senses part of the brain. So by exiting that out, the brain can reset itself and re, re, uh, rejuvenate and re, re, uh, restart itself where it can start now healing because now you're putting on all the, the natural foods in there so the brain can heal. So the motor skills now will increase uh, and be more strength and more, you'd be more uh, alert. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you work with me or you work with my son, you mm -hmm. have different communication techniques. Um, uh, yeah. You get children to really connect with you and like you. My son likes you a lot. How did you acquire those skills? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, um, um, well, I deal with um, the adults more on the, uh, a technical level. Uh, I deal with children more on a personal level. Get children on a personal level and understand, you know, this is what you need to do personally, talk to them, versus talking at them, talking with them on a personal level. Let you know, understand that, listen, I'm not here to hurt you. To, on the person over to, to help you to get where you need to be. The adults are technical because that's the difference in between. Very good. Yeah. Um, let's say a person comes in here with joint problems and pain. Could you actually help them? Uh, yeah, that's actually an easy problem to correct because the problem starts with uric acid and carbonic acid, which is uric acid and different types of meat products. Carbonic acid is sugar or salt. Salt and sugar are two major factors that also breaks down and uh, corrupts the, the joints. And the sugar, I mean the sodium uh, affects the vertebrates, the causes between the vertebrates, which makes it stiff. So it causes pain. Uric acid creates gout, which is a, another form of arthritic pain. So you take the acids out, these, these major factors out of, of the diet, it then allows the body to start to correct and heal itself. Because the person's most, the average person eating a ton of uric acids a day, a ton of carbonic acids a day, which is sh sugars and salts, no matter, no matter they add or not to it, or they consume it, and not consuming enough alkaline water to flush out the system. So they're not flushing out the system, the body is, is holding it. It's holding it, you know what I mean, collecting it. Collecting it and holding it, so now it creates arthritis, because now it's, it's in there, it's like, uh, like an, it's, it is an acid. It's just going there corrupting the blood and the joints, the ligaments. Great, that's great to know. Um, so you've been in the field for 19 years. Yes. Have you seen any improvement over the years? Uh, notice any changes? Um, and do you think that you have any significant part of most of Wow, 
you know, it has changed over, uh, over a period of time because when I first started back in 95, uh, all the way up to about 2001, 2002, people wasn't really as re uh, receptive of holistic medicine. People were really more fo uh, focusing on, um, on, on Western medicine because that's what they knew. And so holistic medicine, people really wasn't gravitating to it until recently in the last, say, five years or so, people uh, learn to eat more healthier, eat more health conscious, and learning that healing the body's natural is more better versus meds sometimes create more side effects. So people, are, I've seen the changes in which in the last five to seven years, it's been a great change, which has been very helpful for us along with the persons because they seen that, listen, this works better for us. I'm not saying that we don't need Western medicine because it is, it, it, we do need it. It's just like we need holistic medicine. I just believe that it has everything has a time and a place. Western medicine, you know, if I get hit by a car, don't take me to a herbalist. Take me to the hospital, stop the bleeding, and then I can work on that later. But and then, when holistic medicine, it has its place. So you can heal the body through the foods, changing the diet, exercising. So it's it's been a it's been a um, it's been a journey. But the thing is, it has been changing, and the thing is, we're glad the changing has been. People are waking up more, and being focused. And say, listen, I need some changes and eat better, change my lifestyle. Yeah. Do you think you've made a significant part of this dream? Uh, I think I made a little bit of dent in it, just a little tad uh, part. And the thing is that I'm so glad to be a part uh, of this industry because that I've got a chance to see some people lives change, uh, which meant more than just monetary. Seeing a person that once was bedridden now get a chance to walk again, have a second chance on life. Seeing people that had gave them three months to live, now they're still alive and their doctors are no longer here. So the little bit that part of, I had a little piece of part that I had played in it, it felt good to see that. And that was the biggest reward to me was to see that person now is still here living life and living at their full potential and at their best. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you like to educate people on holistics and taking care of themselves and like you said you didn't even want to do holistics when you first got into it. Yeah. How did this really become a passion of yours? Yeah because if you know what it found me. It really really did found me because I really um, it's just when I got a chance to actually have a little bit of part in helping someone get well and it grew really grew from there because it was um, uh, I was just finding my way in, in holistic medicine and seeing that you know will it be a, be uh, a benefit and it was and I seen when these people no longer uh, uh, don't need meds or no longer have these issues or cancers and things and that I had a little piece of Part in that, it felt really good. Uh, awesome! Yeah. So it became a big passion. It became a real big passion because each time that I seen someone recover and change, life changed. Then it became, it grew more on me. It grew more on me to to the point now that it became a part of me now, uh, versus uh, when I first started. Uh, I wanted to help people, but now it become to a point where that we live it now. I live it person that, you know, that I, you know, that was living me, I actually live it. So is that what keeps you doing this and keeps you happy, or is there other things that really keep you happy and wanting to do this, because it is a difficult field? Okay. Uh, does it keep you happy? Yes, yes, it does keep me happy. Sorry, it does keep me happy, uh, because I love it. And the reason why I, I love it is because Anytime a person come to me and say, listen, I need to make some changes, and can you help me? And then when that actually happens, and the person says, guess what, you know, Doc, thank you, because I really feel better now, and I really uh, lost the weight. I really got rid of, I don't have to take my meds anymore. That really keeps me motivated. That really keeps me going, and that really keeps me focused on that. Each morning we get up, and man, we really want to do this again. Let's see how many people that lives that we can change. So the whole goal is now we wake up to see how many lives that we can change, you know, versus uh, 
how many people we can keep on meds.